Hello in the game fans! Rogue Lights feature pretty prominently in this edition of the best early access in the games of the month, so we start off with Rise of the Slime, a Rogue Light deck builder in the vein of Slay the Spire. 2019 is really the year of the Rogue Light deck builder, and this game is the latest attempt at it, utilizing a papercraft art style and mixing in almost Darkest Dungeon style exploration. You know the drill by now, add cards, upgrade them and discard the ones that are bogging you down, all controlled by the amount of energy that you have which starts at 3 points. However, enemy attacks and defenses are not spelled out in full in this game, but there are some interesting positioning and elemental effects that come into play. Pixamon Zoo is one part Zoo Tycoon and one part Stardew Valley, where you take on a job as a zookeeper with the task of having to revive it and to prevent it from being turned into a car park. While it can be said to have sandbox-like qualities, allowing you to place enclosures, decorations and choose animals as you please, there is, surprisingly, more of a narrative and story, such as having to impress the mayor and visitors with the zoo in order to prevent foreclosure as earlier mentioned. Do bear in mind that the story is not 100% complete, but things like aquatic, avian and nocturnal enclosures may be added, as are ideas like vehicles, a breeding program and so on, but more animals and maps are the main things over the next year or so. Speaking of farming simulators, Alchemy Garden is another entrant in the first person slant where you create gardens, plant flowers and trees, and harvest exotic ingredients for your potions. Sell your potions for gold to purchase more seeds, tools, and even furniture for your house. There is a slime rancher-esque world to explore with wild plants and minerals to harvest, which combined with the graphical style does make the game look quite good. My concern with these as always is the gameplay loop, whether there is a narrative thread or enough compelling upgrades, so we'll have to wait and see on this since it does seem rather early. The early access plans are rather vague, just promising more content and improvements, but this might be of interest if you like farming games. Nanotail Typing Chronicle is the second entry in the series, following up from Epistory, and both are adventure exploration games where you traverse a beautiful world and use typing as a central mechanic. In Nanotail, you play as a young archivist seeking to catalogue the mysteries of a dying world. However, you do have some magical powers as well, such as the ability to incinerate enemies and are even able to manipulate the shape of your spells by what else than typing commands in. However, the developers themselves state that it is about 35% complete, which is odd for a game like this, when more story chapters are to be added through the next 6 months or so. Early reviews seem to be complaining about bugs as well, so perhaps wait a little on this. The adorable rogue light action game Cat Lady is a twin stick action game where you must explore Grandma's Mansion to remove the source of the curse that has been causing all sorts of ghosts to show up. Of course, the art style is a highlight featuring cute and cuddly cats, but they also double as the actual weapons that you use, from one which throws out kisses and heart-shaped projectiles to a fireball slinging cat wizard and one which uses its gigantic fluffy head to attack. The unlocking of new cats seems to be the main progression, and why wouldn't it be given how cute they are? Early access is planned for 6 months with more areas, enemies, bosses and of course, more cats to come. Spin Rhythm XD is one of the reasons why I love indie games, since if you thought note highways and rhythm games got really stale after Guitar Hero, then this game will change your mind. Probably inspired by DJ Hero in part, this features a spinning wheel as the main control mechanic, with two colours on the highway, 
but the whole control scheme and having to spin the wheel is super fun. Now I'm far from hardcore into rhythm games, but I do enjoy a good one every now and then, and this game really does do justice to the genre. There are currently 18 tracks, and I enjoyed a couple that I set out, but the developers are planning to add up to 30 levels for a start, and 5 possible levels of difficulty. Looks great, feels awesome, and just kicks. Surviving the Aftermath as a post-apocalyptic colony builder, a spin-off of sorts from the popular base builder Surviving Mars, coming under the same publisher but under a different developer. Rather than pushing the frontier in space, you are instead trying to survive in the wasteland after a nuclear explosion. Cobble together shelters, tents and primitive workstations as you scavenge for resources and find a way to survive. There is a very crude exploration and combat system where your survivors can explore a world map and to face off against bandits, but a good start nonetheless and something that certainly has potential. As a fan of both pixel art and roguelites, Rising Hell checked many of my boxes and I'm happy to report that it feels pretty good to play with a gimmick of its own. You are constantly ascending through the levels, hence the rising part of the title, as you explore various procedurally generated levels and take on the forces of hell. A one-hit kill execution move is done if you approach enemies from directly below or above them, leading to some impressive combo chains with meta progression of giving you currency for unlocking weapons and characters from run to run. The gothic metal soundtrack is very apt and awesome, as is the pixel art, and more of everything is to be added through the 6 to 9 months of early access. This one is a no-brainer, since Gensokyo Night Festival is a Toho-inspired metroidvania, carrying on some lineage from Toho Lunar Nights. However, your character is much more chibi and squished in this, with the potential for full screen boss fights and impressive bullet hell patterns. Art and animations are top notch, but things can get very anime in terms of visuals. Another title which is quite early in development, this has only one out of six planned areas to explore, with more playable characters and skills to be added. However, Given that it is by the same publisher and somewhat related to Toho Lunar Nights, I have confidence that it will turn out well. Developer Anthony Case is known for his takes on the roguelite genre, with titles such as Skelly Celeste and Streamium Immortality being highlights, and Spirits Abyss is his latest title. I was very pleasantly surprised to find out that this plays very similarly to Splunky but with more of a supernatural theme and it has both a more punishing roguelite experience where everything resets upon death but there is a mode with meta progression as well. Feels great to play, taking the number one spot. For more of the best indie games, do check out the previous video or click on the recommended playlist and I will see you after the jump.